More than just a nuisance, it actually poses a threat to trees and fruit crops uh, in our area. So here to tell us about the problem is Kelly Hoover. She is a professor of entomology at Penn State. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're good. We're good. Listen, it seems like the spotted lanternfly uh, is just, it, it appeared all of a sudden in the past few years. Uh, in your view, how big of a threat is the lanternfly to crops like apples and grapes? It's not really much of a threat to apples or other fruit crops other than grapes. At first, when we had large numbers show up on um, apple trees, we were concerned that they could become a problem. But they only stuck around for a short time, and then they took off, and there was no impact on how much fruit they were able to get. There was no observable damage, except for some of the sooty mold that you get from the sticky honeydew that they excrete, um, which is just almost pure sugar and water. But for grapes, it's a huge problem. We've seen growers uh, in Pennsylvania who have high infestations lose up to 90% of their yield. Oh my gosh. We've seen them have uh, an entire cultivar, like let's say all their Chardonnay vines oh no. die over the winter. And we now know why, um, because what's happening is the spotted lanternfly is changing how the plant stores uh, energy over the winter. Usually they store it as starch down in the roots. I see. But the lanternfly causes the plants to let it go to sugars so they can eat it. And so there isn't enough starch stored over the winter and the, and the vines can die from winter temperatures. Wow, I mean, these are farmers that are losing all of their livelihood then. I mean, just by these. Yeah, we, we've even flies. seen some some vineyards decide that until lanternfly is under control, they're not even going to try wow. to grow grapes. Any other so, crops? Any other crops that um, are affected? Yeah, unfortunately, they also like hops. <laughs> they like. I'm so sorry. You're like hops. Oh. So if you if you like beer or you like wine, wine you're in uh, trouble. <laughs> <laughs> either one is in danger. Um, they're also a, a pretty big pest on some vegetable crops like okay. cucumber and strawberry when they're young. Mm. So, so what's what's being done to combat the lantern fly? Because I mean, listen, you, if they're affecting beer and wine, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> that's a declaration of war. Well, I agree. Um, I can tell you that ever since it appeared in Pennsylvania, Penn State has had all hands on deck doing research to try to figure out how to control this thing. And we've spent a lot of time on uh, looking at the effects of different insecticides for management. My lab has been working on predators. So what you're seeing in some of these images is predators that are starting to feed on spotted lanternfly in the field. Oh. So we've been looking into that to see whether or not we can develop a biological control program so we don't have to use heavy duty insecticides. Okay. But so far that's really been the only thing that slows them down. So I'm looking at these pictures. We have mm -hmm. red ones, black ones with white spots, red ones with spots, with gray ones. What's, what's the difference? Okay. Is, is there so stages? When they, okay. There are different stages. So when they first hatch, that's the, the fourth instar. It's the last stage before the adult. And you notice the red color? Yeah. That's warning colors. It huh. warns its predators that it may taste nasty. Huh. And so the adults have red hind wings, which is also a warning color. The young ones are the black with white dots. Okay. That's these guys. So there are three what are called instars. So they molt from the egg to a nymph. And then the last, the fourth molt is to that red hmm. looking immature. And then the, the final molt is to the adult. Wow. And it is the adult that does most of the damage. I see, okay. And this is a wheel bug right here that is feeding on a spotted lanternfly. It has a, it's an assassin bug and it has a beak and it's poked into the lanternfly, sucking all the juices out of it. Wow. So there, we do have praying mantises, birds, um, uh, ambush bugs, assassin bugs, um, and lots of different kinds of wasps that are preying on these guys. Well, that's good because we're going to track them down because we need our wine and beer. So yeah. 
Yes, we do. <laughs> Professor Kelly Hoover, thanks so much for enlightening us on these. Uh, no problem. Good luck out there in the Finger Lakes. Oh, and smush these bugs. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yep. We got it. Take care. All right. Thank thanks, you. Kelly.